Hello folks, this is uh, Kevin Madison from Project Dragonfly and um, this is really a, a, an introduction to statistics and what you can do with Excel and other spreadsheets. Uh, the first thing just to mention is that yes, lots of people have different feelings about statistics and data analysis. Uh, some people uh, really have had bad experiences based on courses they've had in the past. Um, that didn't really work or they just find it boring uh, topic um, but many others are excited and we hope that uh, regardless of your background you can look at this all as either a refresher or as uh, something new for you to try and uh, get into and that will help you in your in this master's program and also in life in general okay so um, so data one of one of the first things you want to do is uh, try and get some data and you can get that from the internet there's many uh, sites that publish data that they're collecting uh, so like NOAA the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association has uh, or administration has data that's available on climate uh, variables and there's lots of other uh, NGOs and other groups that, that publish data you can also go out and measure things and this is generating original data uh, that hasn't been collected before so you can um, find things around and, and measure things in your neighborhood and talk to people and find new things to, to look at and uh, before moving on to talk about quantitative data uh, I also want to mention some of the values of qualitative data so just to mention the differences between these two quantitative data is, are things you can quantify they're things that you can put a number to so usually measures like length weight um, uh, things things that it's easy to to just uh, summarize in a numerical format and qualitative data deals more with the qualities of different things you're looking at and certain certain things in the in the natural world there are, are uh, difficult to put a number value to if you're having a conversation with someone and uh, there may be things that are more qualitative in nature that are important to discuss that you can't just put a num number to so that kind of data, qualitative data is really important too and we'll have some other videos that, that look into qualitative data. Um, so I just want to mention that before moving on and talking more about quanti quantifying things and quantitative data analysis. Um, so again, yeah, not all knowledge can be quantified and, and that's, so just remember that and kind of think about things. And actually, one of the interesting uh, approaches now is using uh, sort of blending the two and looking at things in both a quantitative and qualitative approach. Um, so that can yield some interesting insights. So uh, in terms of data, the first thing is to, to get some and then we can apply some statistics to, to the data. So get a ruler or a tape measure, measure things around your house, record the data in a notebook or in a spreadsheet. And this can be a lot of fun. I My seven-year-old son was kind of intrigued when I started measuring his uh, Star Wars figurines, Lego figurines, um, just to get some some data and to start thinking about things and how we summarize data. So um, uh, just about anything you can measure and, and you'll sometimes have some interesting conversations uh, arise from it. And once you have the data, you can um, summarize it in terms of measures of central tendency, which are, are sort of the, the center of the data, which is usually done by mean or average. Those are the same things, of course. Uh, but median is also a common measure of central tendency, and, and there's certain situations where you want to use median over mean, um, and perhaps we'll be able to talk about that in the discussion thread a little bit. And then mode is another one. So these three M's, which you'll remember from previous classes, may, may have been a long time ago or, or maybe more recent, but um, you may want to just review these, what they are, um, just to refresh yourself if you don't have them uh, right at the tip of your tongue as to what they all are. But there's also me measures of dispersion um, or variation around the center of the data. So the way we usually summarize that is in range, which is just the minimum value in the data set and the maximum value. And then standard deviation, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. So let me just get out of here and show you guys um, some spreadsheet data. So this is Excel, and just for those of you that haven't used this in a while, usually you can go into the Start menu, and this depends on whether you're using a Mac or a PC and what versions you have and so forth, but 
you know, you'll find Excel. Um, ask someone if you can't find it, you'll open it up. Um, there's different spreadsheet programs, not just Excel, but uh, Excel seems to be the most commonly used. So in any case, once you get Excel open and you, you kind of type in your data, data set one, and you put in the measurements, um, what you can do, actually, let me just delete some of this there. So these were the five um, measurements of those Star Wars figurines I was mentioning. And I can actually add another, let me add another column. So you can go to insert column, and then we can do observation. And we can just put numbers to these observation one, two, three, four, and five. And then let's also get the average, the minimum value, and the maximum value. And so an average value, um, if you go to home, and at least the version I have, you guys may have to just fiddle around to find this, but there's calculation. So we'll do auto, average, and Excel kind of is guessing that this is the range I want the average for, and it's correct, but you can click and hold, and you can, and then hit enter, and there we have the average, and you can also change the number of significant digits, so you can increase the decimals, um, or decrease them. Uh, and then let's go to actually maximum, which happens to be here. So maximum value for this data set is five. There it is right there. That's the top, the tallest Star Wars figurine. And then let's go to minimum and we can get that too. And then I mentioned, so that's our range actually is 4.1 to 5. Our measure of central tendency, our mean in this case is 4.58, or you might round to 4.6. And I mentioned the standard deviation. Let me just show you how to get that. And um, let me just make sure this column is wide enough so we can make it a little clearer. So when we go back here, now standard deviation is not here in these initial... Uh, groupings, but it does say more functions here, so I'll choose that. And what you can do, actually recently used standard deviation, but you could also, if you don't see that, you can type in standard deviation, hit enter, and you'll see it, here it is, STDEV, and you hit OK, and you highlight the data set, hit enter, and there's your standard deviation, it's point zero point three eight. And what that that's is, is it's an estimate of how far each of these points are on average from the mean. So point, uh, observation number five is 4.1, and the mean is 4.58, so it's 0 0.48 from the mean. And if you did that for each of these, and um, there's, there's a few other calculations in, in that standard deviation formula, but anyway, you would come up with a 0 0.38 as sort of the standard or typical deviation from the mean. So it's a useful way of, of summarizing data. Okay, so after our little Excel interlude there, let me show you um, some of how we can um, report descriptive statistics. So reporting the central tendency and, and measures of dispersion. So you always want to provide both this measure of central uh, measure of, of dispersion in addition to measure of central tendency. Most of the time, people who have not really looked at data in a long time or looked at statistics, they might report mean and that's about it. And uh, really that only tells you part of the story. So um, including variation is, is really important. So here's an example of how you might write this up. Say you're interested in um, community gardening and sustainable agriculture. And so what you want to do is you, you grow some different heirloom tomato varieties and you're testing what is the mean weight and, and the range of weights so you can give recommendations as to what is the best variety. So you might first look at the Abraham Lincoln variety and you see that the mean weight is 8.2 ounces and the range is 3.4 to 12.6 ounces. Well, there's your measure of central tendency, the mean. There's your measure of dispersion, the range. And actually, together, those tell you much more about this particular tomato variety because the mean alone doesn't really tell you how some of these tomatoes are apparently quite small, 3.4, and some are really, really large. So there's a lot of variation in the growth and the size of this particular tomato variety. And you might then compare that to another variety and realize, okay, well, 
Although Abraham Lincoln heirloom tomatoes were 22% heavier, and there in parentheses you can include the mean weight again, and the range, then another variety, maybe India striped uh, tomatoes, which have a lower mean weight. Well, despite that, the, the range is much lower in the India striped variety, or the, the spread is much, much more reduced. So you might you know, decide that you'd rather go with India stripe because even though it's a less lower mean weight, it actually has less variation. So again, it just tells more of the story when you include, include measures of dispersion. And one other point is significant digits should reflect the precision of your measurements. So, you know, it doesn't make sense to include, to actually say, well, technically it was 8.19743, whatever it may be, ounces, because unless your scale measures to the you know thousandth or millionth of an ounce, which most do not, you should really uh, uh, show the significant to just the level that your scale or the precision of your measurement. The human eye, if you're measuring something using um, you know a, a, a tape measure or a ruler or something like that, the human eye can only distinguish to a certain certain degree. So anyway, that's just sort of an aside of reporting data. Um, so, just remember that range has limitations. Great for a sort of summary, but it only gives you the maximum and minimum. It doesn't give you this typical deviation from the mean. That's why standard deviation is really a nice uh, measurement, as I showed you in that spreadsheet. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about more standard deviation, uh, how to calculate it, and you'll learn more about that particular measure because it, it's, it's a really interesting one. Um, but just for now, just to know that it's, it's good to have both of those if you can. And in summary, data is power, of course, and it's knowledge, and it's good to, to have, uh, to be able to summarize the data and look at things and to conduct your own original research, even on things that are just kind of, may seem silly initially, um, but you can learn a lot. Uh, and so using central tendency and the measures of dispersion tell a more complete story than just means or medians or, um, you know, it, it gives you a little bit more. And at this point in the program, at the start, uh, for those of you at the start of the program, it really makes sense to get used to using Excel and get familiar with it. You may want to have a tutorial or two if you're feeling a little bit rough around the edges there.